Hey, what's going on everybody? Space Cowboy here. Welcome back to the channel with another video for you guys here today. And we got to talk about this 2020 draft class and you might be asking, well, why? It's because after this season, their contracts expire and the Cowboys need to make decisions on who they want to bring back from this draft class and who they want to let go. Some are easy, some are hard, but we're going to get through the entire draft class and see who's still on the team, what impact they've had in retrospective for the past three seasons they've been on the team, and my entire view on the player. Now before we go fully in depth, if you guys can hit the like button to show your support for the channel and the video, that'd be greatly appreciated. On top of that, subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell as well if you want to stick around for more. So let's go ahead and get started with the first pick of this draft class being CD Lamb with the 17th pick. And this was a home run selection for the Dallas Cowboys. He slid to them, and many people did not expect him to be there. And as the draft night went on, many people were like, Wow, I'm shocked that he's even there. Do the Cowboys consider trying to move up? You saw guys go, and Jerry Judy fell as well. And many people were like, Do you go with the best player available? And keep in mind, this was the first year for Mike McCarthy as the head coach of the Cowboys, and it started off with a bang. With this particular selection, CeeDee Lamb was the correct pick, and he has definitely shown out for it. He has two Pro Bowls to his name. He was second-team All-Pro in 2022, and you look at the stats that he has accumulated. 260 receptions, 3,396 yards, 22 total touchdowns with some return yardage and rushing yards to his name as well, showing how versatile of a player that he can be. And I think that he will continue to grow. And keep in mind, the dude's only 24. And he definitely is on pace to break plenty of the records that are held by many Cowboys greats as long as he keeps up with what he's doing and grows into his own. Because we saw in year three, he made the jump to being one of the best wide receivers in football. And I think the Cowboys deserve an A-plus pick for this because, yes, while they could have taken Justin Jefferson as well, it just makes sense for how C.D. Lamb has come along and he's been getting better and better. And we'll see if his growth can continue to make him hit that first-team All-Pro. But it's going to be pretty difficult considering who else is in the league. But great job by the Cowboys with this selection. So moving on to pick 51 for the Dallas Cowboys in the second round, they selected Trevon Diggs, cornerback out of Alabama. And this was a rarity for the Cowboys because if we remember the dialogue, Diggs could have been their first round pick, but they elected not to do so because C.D. Lamb was there and it worked out for them. A fantastic one-two punch in the first two selections. And this is another A-plus pick for the Cowboys. And why is that? Well, you picked up one of the best cornerbacks in football. You look at the stats. You look at the accolades. I mean, two Pro Bowls in three seasons. A first-team All-Pro to his name. You look at the stats, 142 when it comes to tackles. He has 17 interceptions through three seasons. Two touchdowns and 49 pass deflections. I mean, the guy has been an amazing asset for the Cowboys and I really hope he gets extended there are talks about ah you know just let him walk or trade him stuff with that crap to be completely honest with you the Cowboys have not had a cornerback of his stature come through the door in quite some time you know in my lifetime really Terrence Newman and Byron Jones are the two best corners that I have seen the Cowboys have had in years and to have a guy like Trevon Diggs is definitely rare because these are the types of players that Cowboys fans have been looking for. Now it's like, oh, you know, we, we don't like him because he's going to ask for too much money. This is what you get when you get really good players. And again, he's going to be an impactful player for the Cowboys for years to come, and I think that they can get an extension done, and they should. So with that being said, an A-plus pick by the Cowboys here, and he has emerged as one of the better cornerbacks in Cowboys lore, and we'll just see how much longer he is a Cowboy, and hopefully it is for many seasons to come. Next, we go to pick 82 of the third round, where the Cowboys selected Neville Gallimore, the defensive tackle out of Oklahoma. So they go back to Oklahoma, 
this time on the defensive side of the ball, and they finally put a body in the defensive tackle room. So Neville Gallimore, Canadian-born athlete, he was actually drafted in the CFL draft as well, which is interesting, but he elected to go to the Cowboys, and so with that, he started off pretty strong. You know, one of the more notable games that I remember from him was that Pittsburgh game, and he was playing very well, but... After that 2020 season, you know, he gets hurt in 2021, and then this year, nothing. And I think you can attribute that to other guys that have come along, and he's kind of in jeopardy of losing his job now, because you look at Mozzie Smith walking through the door this year, and if he shows up and shows that, you do have Osa Odegazua as well, and it's going to be tough, but Neville's going to have to work to ensure that his roster spot is kept, because he could be gone Just off of the nature of depending on who they want in that room. But, you know, I really had some hope that Neville Gallimore can really be something more. You know, especially as a third round pick, you would hope he could be a possible starter level player. And honestly, he just looks at this point like a, you know, career backup player, which... You know, you're not going to hit on every one of these picks, but if that's the case, and knowing what I've seen, this is going to be a D pick for the Cowboys, you know. And the reason it's a D is because it's not a total failure because you got something out of him in the early goings, but ever since that, it's just been meh. So now we move on to our fourth round selection, and this was at pick 123, and this was Reggie Robinson II out of Tulsa. Now, he was taken at the cornerback spot, so the Cowboys, interestingly enough, double-dipped at corner this go-around, and, you know, there was possibility that this dude could play safety. He really didn't turn into much other than a special teams player. I don't really need to go any bit further than that. And also, as a side note, this is day three. I'm not expecting a lot from the day three players. And considering the fact that he was on a special teams and also, you know, I did think that if you could get something out of him, it would be at the cornerback spot, but he was only on the team for two years and then he's released and I believe he's now with the DC Defenders, it looks like, Uh, but that's all I really have on Reggie Robinson, so if I had to give a grade, because he's no longer on the team and he didn't really pan out as a player, And considering he was a fourth round pick, I'm not going to give it a full on F, but I'm going to give it a D considering the fact that, hey, you didn't really do much with him. Uh, And again, I'm not going to put too much of a hard grade on it because it's after, you know, days one and two. I'm a bit more harsher on those because that's when you get your starters. Speaking of starters, we move over to the 146th pick for the Cowboys in the fourth round where they selected Tyler Biotish, the center out of Wisconsin. So we heard about the parallels between him and Travis Frederick, considering Travis Frederick retired after the 2019 season. It was really more so of what do the Cowboys do at center? You know, you had Joe Looney, and then after that, it wasn't really a long term answer and Looney wasn't really that answer. But here comes Tyler Biotis. So he has a little bit of chances in his rookie season, and he was up and down. Then 2021, he struggled. 2022, he came into his own. He actually played very damn well at the center spot to really consider possibly giving him a contract extension. And, you know, when you find value in the fourth round to turn into a starter, that's a plus. Now, it's really a matter of how good of a player do you have to warrant the grade and I think for the Cowboys this is deserving of a B plus you know some people could be like oh isn't it an A plus because you got a starter well to be completely honest with you he's not an elite level player at the center position however I do think his ceiling is you know near above average play at the center spot which is what you want to get with these later picks like If you want to get the most value, especially on the offensive line, if you can get anything that is starter level or above with day three picks, that's awesome. And that's what you should strive for. So I'm going to give this pick a B plus. I think that if the Cowboys do re-sign him, I would definitely consider extending the grade upwards to maybe an A. Because, you know, if he gets even better considering who have more time in the league to process things that's badass and so with that Tyler Biotish I'm very glad that he's a cowboy and 
Hopefully he does get his contract, but we'll see how things go there. He, it's going to be pricey. Next, we move on to our next pick, and that was in the fifth round at pick 179, and that was Bradley Anai, the defensive end out of Utah. Now, a lot of people talked about him being the steal of the draft because he was a very productive player at Utah, and, you know, I was even shocked, too, that he went that low in the draft so after kind of re-looking into it and kind of understanding okay well why did he drop uh he was dropping because he didn't test well at the scouting combine and so with that he had a couple opportunities here and there to really showcase himself and he really didn't and so he only had two seasons with the team and then he was gone and you know that sucks I'm going to definitely give this, honestly, a D as well. You know, he had, you know, promise when you looked at the tape. But considering the fact that he had some moments here and there, but not anything worthy of staying with the team. Again, it's not a full-on F because the guy had some playing time. And again, we're talking about a fifth-round selection. I mean, you know, again, it's not a full-on F like, for example, like a John Ridgeway where it's like, you selected him and you let him go in his rookie season and he's playing better at the other team that he went to, which we'll not speak of because I'm pissed still about that. But <laughs> but with that being said, the Dallas Cowboys didn't really do anything here. And then you go to the final pick, which was your seventh round pick at 231. And that was Ben DiNucci, the quarterback out of James Madison. And so... He got the start against Philadelphia, we remember that, and yeah, I mean, that's really all you got out of it. I would say that, again, you have a player that you hoped can do something, and he was kind of showing things in the 2021 preseason, but I'm going to be real with you, Ben DiNucci is definitely not a NFL starter. He showed some glimpses in the XFL, I believe. Uh, him and Josh Gordon were doing some stuff up in Seattle, but I mean, when I really look at it, Ben DiNucci, when I try to grade a player again, you got something out of him, but you didn't get ultimately what I was thinking you would get. Again, a D for me, it wasn't a complete flop of a pick because, again, we're talking about a seventh round selection, you know, just because it, it's, you know, it can't be an F unless it's like you got nothing out of the player, which you got a little bit of something. So, you know, when I look at this grade of the full on draft, I would personally give this draft a B plus A. I would probably bump it up to an A given the fact that you got three starters out of this draft and you got some rotation players and really just backups at this point. So, you know, and where they were given, you know, where these picks were and all this other stuff. I think that realistically, if, you know, Tyler Biotish didn't pan out, this would definitely be like a B type of draft and it's being heavily carried by the first two selections but overall I think the Cowboys did well given the circumstances of this draft and that's pretty much it what do you guys have to say about it that's my personal opinion uh again put that down below make sure to like subscribe and hit that notification bell and I'll catch you guys in the next one guys all right have a go goodbye